<laughs> Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. And welcome to Sticks and Stones. Today in episode seven, we'll do a DIY project making an illusion necklace. And we'll find out what we've been up to. Sue made a belt out of the fabric she got from New York City. And Julia's been knitting some flowery scarves and gearing up for Nerd Wars. Come join us. So we're back and we've been away for a little while. Our schedule's a little bit off because of vacations. We spent a week in the woods where nice. I pretty much did nothing but knit, which was wonderful, um, and hike and that kind of thing. So show us what you knit. Uh, well, I was pretty busy. I was get, finishing up all my Nerd Wars stuff, so I made a, I made a little monster. Nice. This guy is a monster chunk, and he is actually inspired by the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> from so, Ghostbusters? Yeah. <laughs> That's my uh, one of our, our sanctioned movies. So and that will be a, a like child's present in the in a few months. I've got lots of babies coming still. Not still. mine. <laughs> I don't have lots of babies coming, but I know lots of people who do. So he's gonna go to a sibling, I think. Nice. And then this is another sibling gift. Um, it's a little headscarf. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I've got little crocheted flowers on the front. I haven't really ventured too much out into crochet, so this was kind of fun, and I think they turned out pretty good. Um, and it's it's really neat. It's got like an interesting drape to it. So hopefully, fun. Hopefully it'll work for the six-year-old who'll be getting it. And then last, I made um, my son a little vest. This is um, based on Peter Rabbit. Oh, you started so, that before, yeah, didn't this you? Is, yeah, I did. I showed you guys the very bottom of it. <clears throat> it didn't end up being a sweater. It ended up being a vest. Fun. Which will be better for him because he's an active kind of guy. If you hear anything back there, that would be, that would be the lack of volume control. <laughs> so that's those are my finished things. And then I did do a little bit more with my sweater that I showed you guys last time. Um, I've made it past the sleeve. And I am on to attaching the body. So oh, fun! So this, this is the sleeve right here. This will come together. Yep, yep. It'll and so this will run down the front, and this will run down the back. It's identical for a while, and then it, when I get oh gosh, I have to do like 15 inches, so I have a ways to go. But when I get that all taken care of, I'll add on an edge. Nice. So I'm getting there, little by little. It's really beautiful. Thank you. And you? What, what have you been, have I doing? been doing? Oh, um. I was doing a lot too. I had some vacation time and so I finally started making the belts. This is the, um, the ribbon that I bought in New York City. That's right. And so I put the buckle on and I just grabbed some uh, ribbon from around here, some grow grain ribbon, and put it on the back. So it's reversible. So Those are fun colors. Yes, it is. I like it. I like the brightness of it. Yeah. Um, and I worked on some new products this weekend for my jewelry line. Um, I do custom horsehair jewelry through Red Tail Designs. Mm -hmm. And so I made these two bangles, which I've been thinking about for a really long time and finally got to it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's great when you don't have to do sizing because they're all the same size. Yeah, so these are beautiful. Um, that one's a herringbone braid and then this is a flat braid. And there's, there's horse hair on the inside and the outside. I still have to finish them off. I'm going to add some leather to them to uh, cover the ends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm going to try this one too with leather on the inside. Well, that's a good idea to keep it nice and smooth. Yes. These yes. are really beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, and then I also made um, this necklace. I was going out to the Allentown Art Museum, mm -hmm. and you know, it's typical for me. Um, I'm like, I know what I need to wear with this, and so <laughs> I quick whip this up before I walked out the door, which I do all That's the time. That's a good skill which is, to have. Which is, it's not really because then you're always late. Everyone's <laughs> in the car, and you're like, hold on, I want more graffiti to put on. So, yeah, so. Nice. Yeah. Oh, and I recognize some of these beads too yes. from your trip. Yes. Oh, Actually, all, so most pretty. of those are from that trip. So. <laughs> yes. So that's what I've been working on. It's kind of like a thank you. So, so. did you uh, win anything this uh, month? Because you're always winning stuff. I do. I, I have had a bumper crop of prizes come to me this month. I don't nice. know what the deal is. I guess I should, you know, I should be thankful. But I, I've won four skeins of yarn <laughs> in the past month. And so, uh, wow. actually not really one. This came in a swap. Remember the, the mitts that I had made? Mm -hmm. uh, I sent those off and she sent her package to me. And she sent me this really beautiful cowl, which I should have brought, but it's very hot. So I didn't, I didn't think about bringing it, um, but a really beautiful green cowl. And then she sent me this really pretty red yarn. It's called Imagination, and the uh, swap was for fairy tale swap. So and it was almost, your mitts were almost this color, Yeah, they're they? very similar. It's kind so, of funny. So I got that. And then this is actually, this was kind of neat. Um, I wish I'd known about it before the last podcast. I would have told everybody, but in the month of June, 
Cephalopod Yarns did a charity run for Afghans for Afghans. And if you made something to send to the charity, um, they would give you credit towards a skein of yarn from their shop. So this is the, this is the skein I got. And uh, it's Skinny Bugga. So they're all named after bugs. And this is the Rose Weevil colorway. And a lot of the girls that I, I did talk to on Ravelry um, did end up sending things in. So they, I think they got 500 hats or something to oh, send wow. to Afghanistan for their Afghans for Afghans program. Nice. And I'm not sure how they're making any money this month, but it, I mean, it was wonderful. It was a nice, wow. a nice way to pay back for the work that people were doing. So, so it's not necessarily a prize, but it, it, a know, trade. Yes. It's free yarn. <laughs> so that works for me. So great. in our DIY project today, which we're going to make an illusion necklace. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, so Those are really fun. Yeah, uh, get to it. All right. Today we're going to learn how to crimp. And crimps are the little pieces that hold a beading wire together so that they stay attached to the clasp. So all of these necklaces have been done using crimps. This, there's three crimps here that attach it to this clasp. And that makes this uh, triple strand necklace. And then this triple strand necklace, which is an illusion necklace, has crimp beads at the top and the bottom, but I also use crimp beads along the way to keep the beads in place so they don't move, and then you get the illusion that there is no chain. Um, crimp beads, if you look at a lot of the, the items that you purchase at a department store that are strung on wire, a lot of times they use crimp beads to finish them. Now crimp beads are teeny tiny little beads like that. <laughs> and you use a crimp pliers like that, which you can hardly see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw for you what we're going to do um, in an attempt for you to understand how this works. So a crimp pliers is a pliers that looks like this. I think of it as there's a watermelon at the top and at the bottom it looks like lips. And so when you close the pliers, you get the watermelon at the top and the lips at the bottom. When you use the pliers, you want to use the lips part first and the watermelon second. And what happens is you have um, your crimp bead over top of your two wires. Okay? And your two wires are coming this way. And essentially, when we're talking about the two wires, the reason you have two wires is that you'll have your beading wire and you'll put your crimp bead on, then you'll put your clasp on, and then your beading wire will go back through your crimp to make a loop around the clasp. That's what keeps it on. But now we have to crimp this, we have to smash it basically to make it stay. You can use a needle nose pliers to do this, but sometimes the crimps break and then the whole thing comes apart. Um, using a crimp pliers, it makes them more rounded and they're more secure. So back to our drawing. We've taken uh, our wire and we went up through the crimp and up here is our clasp and it comes back down through. You're going to take this part of the pliers that has the little indentation that looks like lips and you're going to try and get it on either side so that when you push it down, it's going to make a dent in the metal right here between the two wires. And then you turn this whole thing on its side and you use the watermelon section to round it. And so in the end, you end up with um, kind of a shape like this with your wires coming through. And it's, it's a, a rounded piece. When you finish, you can also use um, a crimp cover, which looks like a little C, and you put it around the crimp, and then you can close it with a plier so that you can't see this crimp. All right, so today we're going to work on our illusion necklace. I have one on, and this is a three-strand illusion necklace. So you can see that there's not solid beads on the necklace. There's spaces between them, and so it gives the illusion that they're just kind of floating around your neck. And so what we're going to do for the three strand necklace, we started by um, cutting three pieces of beadalon or uh, bead stringing wire. It's flexible. One of them is going to be 24 inches, one's going to be 22 inches, and one's going to be 20 inches. And what I've done so far is I've strung my first beads on the 24 inch piece of 
um, beetle on. What you're going to do is fold this in half. Now you don't want to pinch it because you'll make a dent in the beading wire and then it'll be all curly. But I want to find approximately the middle. And so now there's the middle of my wire and so for the 24 inch piece, which is the longest, we're going to start from the middle and work on the sides. And so once we find the middle, all we're going to do is either place this on your felt or you can hold it up. And with this we're just going to use the flat nose pliers and crimp it flat. We don't need to use the crimping pliers per se because there's only one strand. And you're going to crimp it on one side and you're going to pull it to make sure that it doesn't move and you've got a good crimp on there. And then you're going to crimp it on the other side. I found I had to really squeeze it to crimp it. Is that normal? Yeah, it depends on how thick the crimping beads are. Some crimping beads are really thin and some are real thick. Mm -hmm. So now we have our first piece and you can see it's not moving. If you'd like, between each section, you can add some beads onto them that will add movement to your necklace. So I'm going to add these two gold ones here. And then when I add my next section, these will move because I'm going to put my crimp on the next section. Okay, so I measure two inches, mm -hmm. and then... So you strung on your beads that are going to move around here between mm -hmm. your first section. Mm -hmm. yep, and, those are, and then I crimp this next one so mm -hmm. that we know where it's starting. Yes. And really, if it's not exactly two inches, Ooh. it's not going to be a big deal, because it is an illusion necklace, and there's going to be a lot of different um, movement and pieces to look at. So okay. if it's not exactly two, it's not going to matter. And once you crimp like you did, pull on it a little bit, make sure it, it uh, caught on the wire and it's not moving around. And then string on your next section, and you want to put those crimp beads pretty close to the beads, and just squeeze them with the pliers to flatten them. I don't think I squeezed that one enough. Yeah, try this pliers instead. That one might work a little better for you. There it goes. And there we go. It. Yeah. And okay. then add a few more floaters that like to move around. And uh, then you can crimp some. And so you're basically working from the middle and working out. You're going to do this section. And after you do this final... Um, section you're gonna uh, start and work from the middle to the other side. All right. Now you can see that we're working on felt here. Um, when I actually do beading I like to have some sort of covering on a table, especially a wood table, because if you drop the beads they scatter everywhere. And so you can just put down a towel or this is a piece of um, polyester felt. Um, there are beading trays that you can buy to use, um, but you don't have to. And the nice thing about the felt too is you can lay out your design on the felt and then you can just pick up the beads from there and you can play with it before you put it on the wire. Okay. The other thing I do is I like having a tray like this with beads on it because that keeps them all in one spot and they're not scattering every time you move your elbow and you knock them on the floor. Now is there a trick for choosing beads, for choosing colors um, or style of beads, what goes together? I think it's really up to your personal palette. You know, for this uh, necklace, we decided to stay kind of in the same palette. We're using some greens here, but um, I think that you're going to be trying to contrast it a little bit with these red beads here, mm -hmm. which I think are a nice complementary color. And um, I like the shapes of them. All of them are these funny little stones, and this one kind of has an odd shape, even though all of them are similar. They have a, just a different sort of shape to them. Um, but really it's about, um, you know, and, and you bought the strand, so it came with these colors all together, mm -hmm. which is nice. And you could, um, like I said before, you could use them the, in the order they came, so it's random. Or you could pull out all the dark ones and make one section real dark and pull out all the lighter green ones and make one section real light and pull out the ones that have the reddish in them and then make a reddish section. Um, it depends on what your per personal preference is. Okay. But if you have a hard time choosing beads, then just go for one of the multi-packs that they sell and you can buy them within a palette and then that helps narrow your choices down and you're not overwhelmed by standing in the bead store staring at everything. <laughs> now I just noticed I have one that, that didn't crimp all the way. I just squeeze it again. Mm -hmm. You okay. can squeeze it again. Alrighty. Alright. Well there we go. That's half. Nice. It does kind of move a little bit. You see yeah, this? there's a little bit of movement there. So cool. why don't we uh, finish up our 
our sections. When we do um, the next section, which is the 22 inch piece, instead of starting in the middle, we're going to start a half inch to the side so that when you line up the necklaces, the beads will layer each other. So we're going to start on the side here and then go on this side and then add our sections on. So now do we remember what we're doing? We're stringing. We're stringing. That is correct. I'm going to use this tape measure. Yep. Yeah, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The hardest part for me as a beginner is looking at what I'm making and not being completely freaked out that when I'm done it's going to be ugly. Well, that's why, I mean, beads and beading materials aren't that expensive in the long run when you think about how much wire you get on a spool. Um, that you can always start over again, right? You can cut it apart and start over. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it. You know that it this project will take us what a half hour and we can start over right I guess that's true we'll cut it apart and say I don't like it or there's some stuff that I make and I wear it for years and then one day I pull out a drawer and I'm like I don't like this anymore and I cut it <laughs> apart and start over there's nothing wrong with that yeah you know I guess when we were talking about knitting one of these pastimes I think I remember saying something like that don't don't be afraid because you could always just pull it back a little bit and here I am, <laughs> totally freaked out about messing something up. Isn't that funny? Yes. It's because you're not familiar with yeah. it. So we all got to step out of our comfort zone at some point, right? Right. Once you've made your three strands, now we're going to move on to the next step, which would be finishing the necklace. What you're going to do is you're going to take your three strands and you're going to tape them together on each side with some scotch tape. I find scotch tape works better because you can slide it off really easily. And then all you're going to do is go up to a mirror and hold it up. And you might find that one strand is down too far, so you want to just hike that up a little bit and retape it. And then, you know, this strand down here, oh, you need to pull it down a little bit more and then take it off and put a new piece of tape up here and redo it until you get it where you feel like it's good. And you can start by just lining them up on the table in front mm -hmm. of you and taping them together and then go from there. Um, but it's important to, to really hold it around your neck because the dimensions of it change mm -hmm. when you hold it around your neck. So how do you know then once it's taped where to make the loops? Oh, good question. When you're holding it up, you could measure it. Um, I like to just wing it because it's individual for you. Okay. And so when you're holding it up, keep in mind that you're going to have a clasp that's probably a half inch to an inch, and you can measure your clasp to see how long it's going to be. Um, but you're going to hold it up, and you know, just keeping in mind that you're going to have that that half inch to an inch in there. And so, you know, keep your fingers <laughs> where they need to be. Nice. And try not to fall over while you're doing it. It's about door taping. Um, <laughs> and then pull it down, and then you can mark it with a piece of tape where you want to put your clasps. Okay. Okay? So now we're going to put our crimps on. I told you you are going to fall. <laughs> All right, so we have our three strands here, and I'm going to keep them taped together while I put the crimps on because otherwise we'll lose our place and then you won't know how long to make the necklace. So I'm going to start by putting my little crimp beads on. So I'm going to start and put my one little crimp bead. Then I'm going to put this tube-like thing, which is called a tornado crimp, and then another crimp bead. 
And I usually like to put two or three crimps on when I'm finishing something off, especially if it's heavy like this necklace is going to be. And then I'm going to make a loop by sending the beading wire back through these three beads. What I'm going to do next is make my loop as small as I want. Now if you were just finishing a one strand necklace, before you looped it through here, you would put a clasp on here. But um, we're going to be finishing this one off a little bit differently. And we're just going to make a loop. So now I'm going to use my crimping pliers. Remember the lips and the watermelon. And I'm going to do the lips first. Make my loop a little smaller. I'm going to start closest to the loop. And I'm going to do my lips first. And then turn it sideways and do my watermelon. and I'm going to pull on it, make sure that crimp is holding on. Now the tornado crimp is a little tube and it has grooves in it and you do not need to use this pliers, you just use a flat chain nose pliers and all you do is flatten it. These are a great, great um, innovation in crimp beads. They're a couple of years old um, and you can find them at beading stores and they're just amazing. You could probably get away with just doing a tornado bead but I like also the way it looks. Um, and then I'm going to do my final crimp before I crimp it though, I'm going to cut off my excess wire. Now the first thing you want to do is pull out the excess wire so you're not cutting off the wrong piece of wire because that would be tragic because you would have to redo your whole necklace. So I'm pulling my extra wire out of my little crimp bead. I'm going to cut off my extra wire right here just below my tornado crimp. And I use an embroidery scissors all the time for these. It just seems to work well. You can't use it for embroidery then though because you dull the heck out of it. Now I'm going to take my little crimp bead and I'm going to put it over that little end that I just made. And I'm going to use my crimp pliers again. Get it real close. Do my lips first. And then my watermelon. And that's the other reason I like to put a couple of crimp beads on is that you can cover the end of that wire. Otherwise it sticks out and it stabs you in the neck when you're wearing it. And I'm going to pull on it and make sure it's in there. And see that end of that wire is inside this tiny little crimp bead here. And um, you won't ever see it. So to finish it off we're going to make loops like that with the other two pieces of wire. So now that we put our uh, crimps and we made three loops on either side, what I did to make this a little bit different is I took two um, clasps and I put them on one jump ring so they're going in opposite directions. And then I put all the little loops on the clasp, which it is a little challenging to get this on. So what that does is if you want then, what you can do is you can take off one of the strands. Okay. And you can make a different necklace. That's a great idea. So I can take off this strand from each of these clips on the side. My little loops are all intertwined here. But now I have a new necklace that's just two strands. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, so if it really becomes too difficult for you to get all the loops on the clasp, what you could do is just have a jump ring that you can open and stick them on, mm -hmm. and then clip the jump ring on there. But see, now you have this necklace. You could take this one off and just have a single. That's a really great idea. So, yeah, it's fun. It turned out really pretty. Yeah. So, in addition to finishing it this way, where you can have multiple strands and take them on and off, the original way I created this necklace was you put all the strands in through a cone okay. um, inside a wire and you use the loops that we learned about on episode 4, I believe it was, or maybe it was episode 5, um, but we learned to make wire loops mm -hmm. and you attach all of these strands to the wire loops, bring them through the cones, and then you have a nice finish on the end. You can go to our uh, website at sticksandstonepodcast.wordpress.com mm -hmm. and we'll have the directions for you to finish it this way if you prefer to do it that way. Looks good. I like both of those ways of doing it. I think it's a really pretty necklace. Well, thank you. I can't wait to get mine finished. Yes, it'll be fun. <laughs> well, so, go ahead. Thanks for coming to thanks. watch us today. <laughs> Despite all of our foibles and <laughs> fun <laughs> moments in time, we appreciate you watching and uh, we hope that you're still enjoying yourself. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Have a great day. <laughs> thanks. Bye.